Hey everyone, welcome back to Pro2DIY. Today we're diving into a super exciting project, retrofitting projector headlamps on a Proton Weera. Imagine having improved visibility, better light distribution, and a sleek, modern look for your car. Projector headlights not only enhance your safety on the road, but also give your vehicle that upscale, contemporary feel. Plus, they're more energy efficient and durable, often paired with HID or LED bulbs that last longer than traditional halogen ones. If you're looking to upgrade your Proton Weera's headlamps for better visibility and a sleek look, you're in the right place. So let's get into it. Here's what you need to make your car's headlights better with projectors. This box has HID light bulbs and a ballast inside. You will need two set of it for both left and right headlights. I will fit B-Xenon projector lens to the headlights on both sides of the car. These projector lens usually have a cover, also called shroud. Projector shrouds are used to decorate projector lens inside headlamps, covering the lens holder and other interior parts, such as mounting brackets, which fixing the projector. You will also need a wiring kit to convert from H4 to HID lights. All you gotta do is simply plug the H4 male socket into the car's existing wire harness, and it will work with the car's original headlight. In this video, I won't be using the pre-made wiring kit. Instead, I'll show you how to customize a wiring kit for projector headlights and hook it up to the original wiring system in a Proton Weera. I'm breaking this project into three simple parts so anyone can follow, whether you're a beginner or an expert. Part one, making a custom wiring kit for projector headlamps. Part two, removing the old headlamp and retrofit the projector. And part three, adjusting the beam pattern to make sure it's safe and accurate. In this video, we're starting with part one, building a custom wiring kit. We're aiming to make everything work perfectly with the Proton Weera's original headlight wiring. Let's jump right in. To wire this projector lamp, you need to understand how the big Xenon projector lamp works. A big Xenon projector uses only one HID bulb. Produce both high and low beams by projecting light through the lens. Now, if you take a closer look at the projector, you'll notice a little metal piece right in the middle. When you're in low beam mode, this metal shield partially blocks the light from the HID bulb. This keeps the light focused on the road ahead without blinding other drivers. Flick on the high beams, and the shield moves out of the way, letting the full force of the HID bulb shine through. There's a mechanism inside the projector that moves the metal shield up and down. When you switch to high beams, the shield drops down, allowing more light to pass through the lens. When you switch back to low beams, the shield moves up to block part of the light, creating that softer controlled beam. The mechanism that moves the metal shield should be wired into your vehicle's high beam controls. This way, when you switch to high beams, it automatically moves the shield out of the way. Upgrading headlights, especially when switching to a big Xenon setup, can be a bit challenging. You can't just plug the ballasts into the sockets meant for halogen bulbs and expect everything to work smoothly. Halogen bulbs typically have three pins, one for the low beam, one for the high beam, and one for the ground. When you switch between low and high beams, only the corresponding pin receives the signal or 12 volts from the car's harness. But with a big Xenon retrofit, you need both beams to stay active. If you switch to high beams without the right setup, the projectors will shift to high beam mode, but the ballasts might shut off, leaving you in complete darkness. To address this issue, I will create a custom wiring kit that keeps both the low and high beams on when the high beam is activated. I'll use two Schottky diodes, which will be soldered to the low and high beam wires. These wires will be connected to form a link for the ballast. The diodes ensure that the high beam doesn't send power back into the low beam circuit, which could cause issues. 
Schottky diodes are used because they have a lower voltage drop than standard diodes, resulting in less heat and better efficiency. For the high beam, you need to solder a new wire onto the existing high beam wire, positioning it between the H4 connector and the Schottky diode. The Schottky diodes are essential in this setup because they make sure the HID ballast gets a consistent and stable power supply, whether you're using the low or high beams. When you switch to high beams, power is delivered to both the ballasts and the projector solenoids at the same time. This prevents your headlights from unexpectedly shutting off during the switch between beams, providing safe and reliable lighting. In simple terms, this wiring setup ensures your headlights function smoothly no matter which beam you use. The diodes offer an easy yet effective way to avoid potential issues that could affect your visibility and safety on the road. To make this custom wiring kit, you will need a ballast connector, a male H4 connector with three terminal pin, two Schottky diodes, some wires, a crimping tool, and some shrink tubing for the finishing. Start by connecting two wires for the high beam projector and crimp the pins onto these wires. This setup is for the high beam. Next, crimp two more pins with red and black wires for the ground and for the low beam. Insert the ground wire on the right, the low beam wire on top, and the high beam wire on the left. These wires need to be snug and secure to avoid any loose connections that could cause flickering or loss of power. It's also a good idea to give each wire a gentle tug to double check they're properly seated. Next up is soldering two Schottky diodes to the high and low beam wires. Diodes are like little gatekeepers. They only allow current to flow in one direction. When wiring the diodes, you'll need to solder the cathode, the negative leg of both diodes, to the wire leading to the HID ballast. Most diodes have a band or line on the cathode side to help you. However, if your diode's markings have worn off or if they're unclear, no worries. You can use a multimeter to check which side is which. To do this, set your multimeter to diode mode. Connect the positive lead to the one end of the diode and the negative end to the other. A reading will be displayed on the meter if the multimeter lead is connected positive to positive and negative to negative, indicating that the diode is correctly positioned. If connected the wrong way, no reading will be shown, indicating that the diode is blocking current in the reverse direction. All right, once you've got those diodes facing the right way, it's time to get them soldered in place. And hey, don't forget to slip some heat shrink tubing on the wires before you start. Trust me, it's the difference between a good job and a wow job. Gotta get that professional look, right? Next, let's solder that ballast connector. Nothing too fancy, just make sure it's solid. No wobbly connections here. After that, I'm going to wrap the diode up with some electrical tape to keep things tidy. We don't want any loose wires flapping around like they're on holiday. All right, final step. Carefully remove the terminal connector from the ballast so you have enough space to slide the heat shrink tubing over the wires. Use a small flathead screwdriver, but be gentle. No need to force it. Once the connector is out, Slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over the wiring kit. Choose a piece of heat shrink that will be large enough to slide onto the wire before heating, but will still provide a snug fit once heated. The shrunken diameter should be slightly smaller than the wire's diameter to ensure a tight fit. Then, grab your heat gun or lighter and slowly warm it up. Keep the heat moving back and forth along the length of tubing, as staying in one place can damage the wire. The tubing will shrink and fit snugly around the wires, protecting them and giving a clean, finished look. All right, so now that you've taken the terminal connector out, it's time to pop it back in. First off, 
have a good look at the connector. Most of them have a tiny tab or clip designed to keep the pins locked in place, like a little seat belt for your wiring. Grab a small flathead screwdriver and gently lift that tab. No need to be rough here. Just give it a nudge. Once you've got the wire and pin prepped, slide it back into the correct spot. You'll know they're correctly inserted when you hear a slight click. This is the locking mechanism snapping back to secure the pins in position. Since there are two headlights, you'll need a separate wiring kit for each side, left and right. Before diving into the full installation, it's crucial to test everything to make sure it's working perfectly. I'll take you through each step of the procedure. As you can see, the HID bulb is already securely mounted in the projector. Connect the HID bulb to the ballast and then link the ballast to the wiring kit we prepared earlier. Time to power it up. For this test, I'm using a computer power supply unit, PSU. It's a great choice because it delivers a steady 12 volt output, just like your car's electrical system. If you don't have a PSU on hand, no worries. You can test the wiring kit directly using your car's battery through the original headlamp wiring. Once everything is hooked up, switch on the power and watch the magic unfold. Switch between high and low beams to make sure the shield is moving correctly and the light is doing its thing. By now, you should have a smooth functional HID conversion. Once you've confirmed everything's in working order, you're ready to install it permanently in your car. So, as always, I hope the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for that next video. All the products I use in this video tools are linked in the description. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Find the link in the description below.